Hey, good morning once again, options traders, and welcome back, everyone. Well, a question that I get a lot from traders is about this connection with delta being the probability for an option to go in the money. And that's because depending on what you read out there, whether it's in books or on websites, some people say that delta is the probability for an option to go in the money. And that is just flat out wrong. These people have heard it somewhere else and they turn around and teach it as if it's true. Now, can you use Delta as a rough approximation? Sure. And in a lot of cases, it can give you a pretty good rule of thumb for some trading decisions. But if you're really trying to get a handle on the true probability for an option going in the money, it is not Delta. And depending on what's happening with volatility and other factors, you might be just a little bit off or you might be a lot off. So let's go dive in a little bit deeper and find out why. And before we do, as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's definitely very much appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So the probability of being in the money. Remember that Delta is an output from a pricing model, let's say from the Black-Scholes model. And again, Delta is an approximate probability of an option going in the money. But that does not mean it's a good approximation or that it is the probability. And unfortunately, traders relying on Delta as the probability can get very different results. Now, if the option is very deep in the money or very deep out of the money, Delta is going to be a fine approximation because you're either moving towards zero or one. But if you're somewhere in that middle range, you can be off by quite a lot. So again, the question is, where exactly does Delta come from? So before we flip the screen here, not to spook anybody, they are outputs from pricing models. So yes, there is going to be some math don't worry about it because you don't need to do it. You just need to understand where it's coming from. Okay, so deep breath, and here we go. So in the Black-Scholes model, there's two things that you need to know to figure out the probability of going in the money and the delta. And that's one that they call D1 and D2. Now notice there's a formula, don't worry about it, for D1, but we need to know that to figure out D2. See, D1 is also in this formula down here. So the basic idea is you're taking the what's called the natural log of the stock divided by the strike. We're adding the risk-free interest rate plus the variance. This is the volatility squared divided by two multiplied by the time. Time would be expressed in years divided by the volatility times the square root of time. It's a long formula, but it's actually quite easy to plug in numbers and get this number over here. And once we have that one, this one's fairly easy. It's just this number subtracting off this denominator. And those are the two inputs that you need. So here's an example. So let's say that we have the stock at 100 and the strike is 110, All right? So this is a call option that's 10 points out of the money. Risk-free interest rate, let's make 3%, volatility 20%. And then finally, let's just say that there is one year until expiration. Now remember, this has to be expressed in years. So if you had 90 days, you would put 0.25 here for the years. So that's the first row, the numerator right there. We divide that by the volatility times the square root of time. I'm just going to make it one year. And if you put that into a calculator, you're going to get a number of minus 0.2265. Now what you have to do is to throw this into usually an Excel spreadsheet or a table, a statistical table that will show you the area under a curve for this value. This is what's called a Z value for those of you who have had statistics. And it comes up to be 0.4103. And that is the delta. Now for the D2, we're going to take D1, that's this number right here, subtract off volatility times the square root of time. That comes up to be minus 0.4265. We throw that into Excel, find out the area under a bell curve, and that comes up to be 0.3348. And this is the probability of being in the money. What you need to know, you don't need to know all of these steps, but what you need to know is that if you go through these calculations, this is an out of the money option. Look at the true probability of going in the money is only about 33%, but the Delta is 41. You're a good seven percentage points off. This would give you the impression that there's a better chance for this option to go in the money than there really is. So this number right here in red, this 0.4103, again, if we fed that into an Excel spreadsheet, what you're finding is this red area. That's 41% of the area 
under the curve. But once we find ND2, it actually subtracts some of this. And so this green area is the discrepancy. And you can see that's not zero. There's definitely some discrepancy between the delta versus the true probability of being in the money. Now the problem is that this discrepancy grows with volatility. So let's take a look at 20% volatility. Here's different stock prices for those same parameters. This is the 110 call with the stock at 100. And we're just letting the stock price move different stock prices, and the red line is the delta calculation, and the blue is the probability of going in the money. And you can see that the probability of going in the money is always less than delta. Delta will always overstate it. Now, if the stock is way down here, let's say 50 to 70, it's a very far out of the money option, sure, delta is going to give you a real close approximation because it's basically zero. And if the option is very deep in the money, maybe with the stock up here at 140 or higher, you can see that the blue and red lines start to get very close again. And eventually we'll start closing in on one, meaning that there is a 100% chance for that option to be in the money. You gotta be super deep in the money, or at least somewhat in the money with very little time to expiration before that's going to happen. But take a look at this widest point. Now in this case with 20% volatility is about 0 0.079 or roughly 0.08. And that occurs at about 108 stock price right here. So once again, eight percentage points is not zero. There's a pretty good discrepancy. And that gap in there stays for quite a while. You've gotta be very far out of the money or very far in the money before Delta becomes a really good approximation for the option going in the money. But watch what happens to this gap when we increase the volatility from 20% to 40. Look at that it actually doubles. It's going to have its widest point at the same stock price, but it's going to double. The widest point is now 0.157, almost 16 percentage points off. And that's just with volatility at 40%, which is not by any stretch a huge volatility. Recently in 2021, certainly during COVID, we've seen 40, 50, 60 volatilities, 85 during COVID. So 40 is not really all that high. And look at how wide that gap is for such a wide range of stock prices. So the main thing that you want to realize is that if you've read any of these books, websites, anything that say that Delta is the probability for an option to go in the money, or maybe they allude to that it's a very good approximation, the thing that you want to take from this is that that is simply not true. Sure, you can use Delta as a rough rule of thumb of saying, hey, look at this out of the money option, it's got a five delta, and just say there's not a real good chance for it to go in the money, as opposed to saying there is definitely a 5% chance. Just use it as a rough approximation. But the thing that I want to make sure that all of the traders in our group know is that delta is just a very rough approximation at best. And as volatility gets cranked up, that approximation degrades quickly. And so this is why it's so important to understand your options and your options theory because it's easy to read stuff like this on the web and start making decisions based on bad information and that is only going to mean bad results. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsatoz.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group and you can find a link in the description below.